So in a few words, speak to God. Say something to God. We're in the atmosphere of faith. What two or three gather together in my name, there I am in their midst. And Father, we bless you. We give you praise. In Jesus' mighty name, we have petitioned you. Amen. Amen. Kindly be seated. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Kindly work on the microphone. Thank you, Jesus. I have two good news for us as a community of believers. The first one is that Wednesday was my third year anniversary of being a married man. You see, I don't wear this suit just for wearing. Once it's my anniversary, I wear it. Hallelujah. So let's hope when I'm about 50, I'll still be slim. Amen. The second one is that our dear brother Daniel has a team now. Oh, I said Daniel. Our dear son Daniel has a team now. You don't remember Daniel because you've not been coming to church. Benes, you see? Hallelujah. By God's grace, he, he texted me on, I was driving. He said, Pastor, finally God has done it. Amen. And he sent me a picture of him signing. And I said, I hope you sign deeper. Yeah. And so we are not just going to uh, limit our prayers where he is. He has to move into the premiership. Yeah. Amen. He has to move up. The greater part of the warfare has been done. We've survived it. He survived it. He's been a winner. He has to move up. Hallelujah. And uh, the other news is that I phoned Bishop and they went to doctor's uh, funeral. And he said it was successful. Hallelujah. And so we are giving God uh, all the praise and the glory for what he's done. Now, I want us to look at five fundamental questions. Every human being at some point in your life, you have to ask those questions. Because until you have clarity of vision, there wouldn't be any sense of a unity or purpose. And you and I are alive simply because of the purpose of God for your life. I often tell people that if anybody dies, regardless of how they died, it is because the purpose of God for them has ended. Amen. And so it's imperative that you understand that you're not in existence just to occupy space. No. And that there's something greater and something more magnanimous and magnified and more powerful about your life. And it is your responsibility to find out. I keep saying that if you fail in life, it is nobody's fault. It is your fault. Especially when you are one of the most powerful books called the Bible was you. And you have access to a gazillion of godly inspired word. Hallelujah. And so it's important that we understand we are not just alive to occupy space. Number two, that every step you take in life, every age, every age that is out of two years, it is also God's strategic planning for you. Hallelujah. And that until a man is, 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 is uh, until a man defines what their purpose is in life, it is easy to give up. Hallelujah. And I'm sure that after us going through this, somebody will receive clarity. Hallelujah. I said, I'm sure that after going through this, somebody will receive clarity. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. What you need to understand is that Jesus, when he was on earth, there was only one purpose. He went about healing, delivering, but he was looking to the cross. Until he had been hung on the cross, the purpose of God for his life was not yet fulfilled. Every now and then, there's a spirit in man. And the inspiration of the Almighty giveth him understanding. Job 32 verse 8. Every now and then the spirit in you. Which connects to the spirit of God. Prompts 
introduce you to the reality of your purpose and why you cannot give up and why you cannot accept failure and why you cannot accept defeat because if I fall today, my purpose dictates that I've got to get up. Hallelujah. If things don't work today, my purpose dictates that I've got to work hard and push hard to get to the point where these things will work. Amen. Now, kindly let's go to Isaiah chapter 55. Isaiah 55. Hallelujah. Isaiah chapter 55. And so, purpose is what defines the limits of a man's existence. See a man, you see their purpose. Hear an individual talk. You would hear them speak. Even in coded words, their purpose. Hallelujah. Your purpose is wired into you. Your greatest mistake will not be to sin. Because the blood has already taken care. But your greatest mistake will be to renege on the promise that you would run, pursue your purpose. Understand that your purpose dictates that there are a thousand people connected to you. Once you step in, 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 into space, God brings you into the fore of these people. And until you define what your purpose is, you'll be left alone. Hallelujah. I'm reminded of a story in Matthew chapter 25, a king traveling, and the Bible said he chose. I love that. I love the story so much because the story actually dictates and it paints a picture of who we, we were before God stepped in to help us to be who we are, we are, we are supposed to be. Number one, they were his servants. They were not on the same level with the king. Understand that. They were his servants. He, 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 would, he would lavishly enjoy life. They were meant to serve him. But then out of his own generosity, the Bible said he chose three out of the many servants. Out of the many servants. The gift that you joke with, understand that God gave it to you because you're his servant and you're meant to do his purpose. The skill that you have, he gave it to you because you are his servant. Am I speaking to somebody? The ability to talk. Stand up. In this world, if there is any president who can talk, you know it's Barack Obama. And just by the fact that he could talk, his talking took him somewhere. Hallelujah. He doesn't make sense all the time, but his talking took him somewhere. Am I speaking to somebody? David knew how to play the harp. Even before David became a king, he had already entered the palace. By virtue of what God had given to him to serve humanity with. And when these three were called, the Bible said, according to their several ability. Uh, you don't have just one ability, you have several of them. The king measured each and everyone's ability. Everyone has several. So the Bible said he looked at one who had five several abilities and gave five to him. He looked at the other one who had two, gave two to him. Looked at the other one who had one and gave one. None was cheated. But when the king came back for accountability, you don't need ten to make it. You just need what you've been given. The five said, according to my several ability, you reposed enough confidence in me. And then you gave me five talents. Look, king, I've gone to work with the five, gained five. The Bible said the king said, come, take over many cities. Two came back. The same. The first one went and traded. The, first, the, the other one gained. The third one looked at the king. Forgot that he was a servant. And that the king wanted to elevate them to be governors. And that was the day God had touched the heart of the king. To change the trajectory and the direction of their destinies. Yet he forgot how he had suffered many years as a servant. Gone through pain. 
anguished, frustrated, disappointed by men. He forgot everything. And the king gave him one according to his several ability. When the king came back, he looked at the king. Said, I want the old lifestyle. I want to remain a servant. So I didn't do anything with what you gave me. I want to remain where I am. I like my situation. I keep saying, if you're from the Afro-Caribbean community, listen, because our, back, our civilization was built against the backdrop of slavery, there's one spirit that bugs every one of us, the spirit of mediocrity. We tend to call mediocre things excellent. Because when a man hasn't got anything, whatever they are given, they tend to appreciate it. True or false? When you're hungry, but if they prepare human meat and garnish it, you finish it before asking, what did I eat? Am I speaking to somebody? And so often, people listen, we get so little and we, we, we like it. And God is saying, listen, according to your several, not just an ability, several abilities, several, several, many abilities, I have chosen you. He looked at the king, forgot the background, forgot where he was coming from, and said, I didn't do anything with what you gave me. And the Bible said, even that which he had was taken. I'm just, this is a preamble to what I want us to look at. Even that which he had was taken. Watch this. Now you understand why. If you're not careful uh, <laughs> and work with what God has given you, you will remain poor because even what you have is taken. Was given to the one who had five. And then he, the king looked at him. Your disappointment. I wanted to change your life and affect that of your family, affect that of your community. But you chose not to do anything with it. And the Bible said he was sent into eternal domination. And there will be nation. If you're not careful, in this life, I don't know how many opportunities or chances God has for you. But I know that every chance must count. Am I speaking to somebody? I don't know. Maybe your opportunity, you have only one opportunity in life. And, and, and I, can, I can support this by saying that my God shall supply all my need. The Bible never said needs. Maybe your opportunity is just one for many, many, many doors to open. Maybe you have five opportunities. Maybe you have two according to your several ability. I'm trying to draw our minds to what the simplistic definition of what purpose is. Purpose is simply the reason for which something is. Is your purpose just to wake up every morning and go and come back? Is that all your life is about? In Isaiah chapter 55, let's go to Isaiah 55. I see somebody doing more than they are doing in the name of Jesus. I said, I see somebody doing more than they are doing in the name of Jesus. Isaiah chapter 55, I think verse. Let's read from verse 8. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. As the rain cometh down and snow from heaven and returneth not, thigh to bud water at the earth, and make it a bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the one who is sowing, and bread later to the one who is eating. So shall my word that goeth forth out of my mouth, it shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please. And it shall prosper in the thing where to I sent it. He said, your ways are not my ways. How many know that man was an idea in the mind or a thought process in the mind of God? Amen. Amen. Man, woman, 
light skin, dark skin, short, tall. We were all an idea, an idea. It was ruminating in the thought processes of God. Watch this. Amen. Then the thought evolved into a purpose that can that could no longer stay in the mind of God. And that at some point the thought had to manifest into a walking purpose. Words are the garments that frame our thoughts. Whatever you surround your thoughts with, it determines the, the limits of your destiny. The way you think determines what, what you can become. Hallelujah. You're where you are, not because somebody pushed you there, but because of the way your thought processes are. Everything that is an idea at some point has to manifest. Amen. So he said that I have this thought. Now let's go to Jeremiah 29 verse 11. I have this thought. And this thought is in my mind about creating someone in my image. In my image. So the Bible said in Genesis it said let us Father, Son, Father, God, Father, Holy Ghost. Let us make man whom we've already thought of in our image and in our likeness and in our authority, in our creative ability. Everything that is of God formulated into a thought that could no longer remain in his mind and the thought had to be released. And the thought became a purpose, the reason for which the thing is in existence. And so the Bible said God created man in his own image. God formed man from the dust of the earth. And then he breathed into him and man became a living soul through the process of creation. And so that which was an idea became a thought. And after thinking it through, it became a substance or an object in existence. Am I helping somebody? Am I helping somebody? Now in Jeremiah 29, 11, for I know what I think. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you. And on Twitter, I, you'd hear trending. Trending is simply what is happening in that immediate one or one, one minute or two minutes. So trending, uh, Clinton, Mrs. Clinton is leading. That is trending. Trending because over a certain number of people have decided to talk about it. So it's become the focus on Twitter at that time. Am I speaking to somebody? So every minute, every split second, can understand that you are trending in heaven. Because he said, I know the thoughts I think of you. It's not say, I knew the thoughts I was thinking. Am I speaking to somebody? Because when man was an idea in the mind of God and subsequently man became a substance, the thought processes of God regarding a man did not stop. Amen? It didn't stop. The thought processes are still going on. Hallelujah. So I've got five, about five or four definitions of what a purpose is. Because at some point, you and I need to take a break and ask yourself this fundamental questions. In as much that a lot of people didn't turn up today, what is uh, summer? They're enjoying summer. You need to ask yourself that question. Hallelujah. What is my purpose? What is my purpose? And I keep telling some of my younger women that God created a woman to be loved by a man, to be married off. Hallelujah. That is an aspect of your purpose. Amen. Hello. Am I speaking to somebody? At some point in your life, someone will walk in. Sister, I want to die for you. And you say, oh man, I will also die for you. Then it's called marriage. Mwah. Hallelujah. That's an aspect of, of your purpose. That's a fundamental reason why God created every man. And also understand that a woman is simply a man with a womb. Is a womb man. Hallelujah. So it is not true that you cannot do what any man is doing. You can do anything you want to do within the context of God's calling for your life. 
Amen. The reason why society often subjugate women to lesser uh, skill is simply because there's a war going on between Satan and women. Because the Bible didn't say the seed of the man. He said the seed of the woman will bruise your head. So the woman became the first point of Satan's warfare. Hallelujah. And that is why every now and then there's a push to put women somewhere. Somewhere, you're a woman, keep quiet. And she has sense more than the man. Am I speaking to somebody? So let's look at uh, the, the fa- <laughs> let all the women shout amen. amen. Even for the, the women who didn't turn up, shout amen. amen. Hallelujah. Number one, a purpose is defined the reason for which something exists or is done, made or used. The purpose of the microphone is not to be eaten up. Hallelujah. The purpose of the microphone is for you to speak so your voice will be amplified. Amen. The purpose of a chair is for the fundamental purpose. Now people can do strange things with chairs. But the fundamental purpose of a chair is for one to rest on. Am I speaking to somebody? Amen. And so the reason for which something is in existence. Number two. An intended or desired result. I keep saying success is intentional. Why am I sowing the seed? Because my intended desire is that the seed will one day, one day germinate into, let's say if I sow the seed of a corn, I'm expecting the corn, the seed to grow into the corn tree with a corn corpse. Am I speaking to somebody? Purpose. It is an intended. What is your intention today? Why did you get up from your house to walk in here? If it was about having a social relationship, this is not the place. It is a place for spiritual empowerment and spiritual feeding. Hallelujah. Purpose. Hallelujah. And the third one, it says that determination and resolute. This person has purposed. And the Bible said in Daniel chapter 9 verse 2. And Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not touch the food of the king. And so another definition of purpose is that you have to be resolute. Nothing is free. Nothing is cheap. Anything that is worth is costly. Hallelujah. Anything that is worth is costly. Anything great is costly. You have to have the resoluteness to fight, to push, to possess that which God has destined for your life. Hallelujah. And... um. For the subject in hand, the point at issue. Why are we gathered here today? Why am I preaching? What am I preaching? The purpose of today's meeting is that I am preaching to you about five fundamental questions you have to ask yourself. And it all is hinged on the concept of purpose. Amen. And that is important. Hallelujah. Then you also have finally practical result effect or advantage to act to good purpose hallelujah so the question every now and then that will help you in fighting and pushing through and not giving up number one is where am I from Understand that your source determines your output. You shall be like the tree planted by the rivers of water. The best fruit in its season. Its leaves never will. Now imagine this. If the tree was not planted by the rivers of water. Now understand that it wasn't just one source of a river. He said by the rivers of water. What? Meaning many, many, many rivers. So the tree by that side was not going to be denied. Now the number one thing it needs water, purpose. Where am I from? So when you look at the tree, you can say this tree, the reason why it is blossoming is simply because it is connected to the right source. The right information comes out with the right formation. What you're feeding yourself, people. Is determining your output. It doesn't matter how many times you fast and pray. If what goes in here is wrong, 
what comes out will be wrong. Where am I from? What is my source? We're having a discussion then. I was telling Uncle Dad, uh, uh, um, I was uh, Uncle, Uncle, I was talking to Uncle. And, and we're having a discussion. I said, a person's environment determines who they are. Whether if you like it or not, that is true. In 1 Corinthians 15, he said, evil communication corrupts. Good man. So the kind of environment you are in determines even how you see God. Am I speaking to somebody? I mean, out, out in the world, people see God as some old man who is wicked and is watching things happen. <laughs> man would always want to absorb himself from, from the things he, he causes. People see God as an old man. He said, do you believe in God? If there's God, why are there wars? Has we ever seen God taking a gun and killing people before? We make choices. Man has been given the power over their will, so your will can determine what you do, regardless of whether if God is. So where are you from? You're not from heaven. Because <laughs> you've never been to heaven. You're not from Ikeja, Lagos, Try, you're not from Sunya, you're not from, you're not from Babylon people. Hello? In reality, this is where you, you came from the earth. What gives you significance is the breath of God in you. See, as you sit in there, they can find iron in you. They can find zinc in you. They can find all the minerals in the earth in you. Where do you come from? You came from the dust of the earth. And the breath of God is what gives you significance. Hello? So the Bible said, and God formed man out of the dust. Dust, when he caught it, everything that was in the earth was found in the dust. And God created you. So they can find iron in you. They can find zinc in you. Too much iron will give you something. Too much carbohydrates will give you something. And, and, and there's got to be balance. Am I speaking to somebody? Stop eating fufu ever. At 10, 8, 10 p.m. Pastor, what are you? I'm eating fufu at 10 p.m. Now you go to the doctors and they are telling you your cholesterol. And you're like, Pastor, we need to pray. You need to pray. We don't need to pray. Am I speaking to somebody? Where am I from? You. Came out of God. He said, and God created man. The image, people listen, isn't the actual object. The image is a semblance of the actual object. And so whatever can be found in the actual object can also be found in the image. Where am I from? The interesting thing is that we often ask about where we are from, but we forget that where you came from, one day you will go there. It's a two-way street, hallelujah. Where am I from? The first question you need to, at some point in your life, pause and ask yourself, where am I from? If you're from God, then the struggle is not from God. Because God created man in his image. And the Bible said after he had created man, he said everything I've created is good. Job said affliction does not rise out of the dust. Meaning that somewhere, somehow, everything you're suffering or dealing with comes from somewhere, not from your source. Choices. We make choices in life. And yesterday I came to understand while praying is that every mistake, this, every act of disobedience delays a person. Every act of disobedience delays you in life. Every act of disobedience when it comes to God, it delays you in life. Choices, choices, desires, things that have no bearing to the original intent of God for your life. We get so enamored with these things and by the time we see it becomes too late. Where are you from? 
You came out of the breath of God. The Bible said after he had formed man out of the dust, man was nothing. Then God breathed, Numa, his spirit in you. So in talking about where you are from, I told somebody that regardless of where we came from, the blood of Jesus we, has made us one. And it's not about where you come from. It's about belonging to the family called the Christian family. Where are you from? Is that your life? Where you come from? Do the people who come from where you come from suffer with what you're suffering? Do they go through the same pain? He said, the Lord is a son, the Lord is, well, is a show. The Lord will give grace and no good thing would he withhold from those who walk upright. I came to tell somebody that what you're suffering is not from where you are from. The pain that you're going through is not from where you are from. Because where you come from, it is only good. It is only good. It is the best. It is the intent of God that operates in that realm. And it, says, it, it, it will be important. If you get to understand that, where are you from? You came from God. Tell somebody, as I see you, as I'm looking at you, you came from God. Begin to operate in the power of God. Am I speaking to somebody? They were ordinary men, ordinary men, ordinary men. And the Bible said on the day of Pentecost, when the Spirit of God came on ordinary men, they were changed because the connection to their source was broken by sin. But when the Holy Ghost came on them, that connection was bridged by holiness. And now ordinary men stood up. And Peter, who was an ordinary fisherman, had never gone to any institution of learning, stood and spoke for 3,000 men and women to give their lives to Jesus. It is your turn to activate the power of where you come from. And as you activate that power, you will see mighty things happen in your life in the name of Jesus. Too many times has Satan lied to you that it's not going to work, that it's going to be like this, that you are going to die by that disease. But I stand in the name of Jesus as the prophet of God and I prophesy to somebody, activate where you come from. And you would know Jesus looked at them and said, He that cometh from above, speak at the things. I'm telling you things from where I come from. I'm telling you, where do you come from? We get too bogged down by situations and we try and identify ourselves by the fact that, oh, I've been looking for a job, Pastor. I've been trying, I'm not getting a job. That's not where you come from. It's a situation that you are experiencing. Am I speaking? Because God hates lazy people. So it, it is not true that you won't get a job. It is true that you have to have patience. That in his own time, he will make all things beautiful. Pastor, I'm, I'm single. He said, watch this. None shall want for a mate. None of these words that I'm speaking to you. He said, none shall fall to the ground. He said, watch this. None shall want for a mate. Walk with God. Just keep walking with God. At the right point, at the right junction, the man or the woman to marry you will step up without you sweating. Because where you come from, things work easily. Tell somebody they work easily. You see, the whole essence of Jesus was to demonstrate what happens where he came from. As he was walking, he was just doing what? Where he comes from. What they do. Healing. Deliverance. Casting out Satan. Doing all these things. It is not true that you are a failure. It's not true. It is not true. People, I said it is not true. That this is your last. It is not true. It is not true that you will walk in poverty. That you lived in this country and things won't work. It is not true. For I know the thoughts I think of you. Thoughts of good. Thoughts of good. And in school we were taught good, better, best. God did not talk about better. He did not talk about best. Because he has empowered man to work from good. To becoming better. So they can be the best. It's not true. It's not true. This is, this is not your end. Don't believe it. Tell somebody don't believe it. So the first, where do I come from? If I understand that I come from a place higher than the earth, then I've got to have 
a mind that is not of the earth. He said you are in the world, but you are not of the world. Am I speaking to somebody? So I'm in the world, but I'm not off. Meaning that I don't partake of the negatives and the evil that happens. I live in the world to exhibit the glory that happens where I come from. Whoa. Tell somebody, whoa. How am I speaking to somebody? I'm much more powerful. I'm better than what they want me to believe. The government cannot make me a statistic. Neither can situation turn me into a bitter person. No, because where I come from, they said that, that, that God might delay, but he's never denied anyone. Hello? When he chooses the time for his manifestation, nobody can stop it. Am I speaking to somebody? So where are you from? I'm from God. Oh, heaven. Heaven is a dimension. Heaven is not there. Hell is not there. There are dimensions before they become places. Stop thinking. That when were kids growing up, you thought Jerusalem was up there. Hello? Heaven is not there. If I'm pointing at the same direction, someone also standing back in Ghana points at the same direction. There are two different places. It's a dimension. Tell somebody, it's a powerful dimension. And that's where I come from. Am I speaking to somebody? Every now and then Satan will try and try. Throw negatives, throw evil at you. When these things do happen, look at them and tell them, I don't belong to this. It's, it's beneath me. I'm better than this. Tell somebody I'm better than this. Hallelujah. Ask them, where do you come from? Because once you identify your source, your sustenance, Therefore comes from your source. You did not come from any man. First John chapter 1 verse 12. He said these people who believed in Christ. He gave them the power to become the sons of God. In one of the definitions he said. These people were not born by blood. But by the will of God. By the will of God. By the will. So my source is not in any man. People. The Bible said cursed is anyone that puts a trust in a person, in a human being. It will be a mistake to think that a change of government will make your life better. If your life won't be better, even when God becomes the president, you still struggle. Am I speaking to somebody? The betterment of your life is dependent on you connecting to your source. Your source. Man is meant to be your resource. God is your ultimate source. Stop leaning on men. People will disappoint you. But God has never disappointed anyone. It might take 14 years, but he'll still come through. It might take 25 years, but he'll still come through. He has never. You see, being humans, we want it now. And we often equate our wanting it now to God's disappointment. It is not true. When God gets ready, he moves. He moves the heavenly assembly, the innumerable assembly of angels, the spirit of just men made perfect. He moves the whole heaven to one person. And settles their life. Remember the story of Obedidom. Minding his own business. And David brought the ark. And this man had been practicing his worship for many years. Practicing his worship for many years. And whenever the ark of God enters your house. David thought the ark was meant to go to kill him. But he understood what you have to do. In order to get your blessings out of the ark. And the Bible said six months or three months or some time after. David heard, watch this. That the ark had not killed Obedidom and his family. It had rather been a blessing. It doesn't matter where you're positioned. It doesn't matter your medical condition right now. When God gets ready. Because your source is of God. He's constantly sending you sustenance. The painful reality is that you are busy looking onto the help of man. And you think God has disappointed you and God has left you. But rather you have left God because your focus has shifted from leaning on God completely. And you're looking up onto the help of man, which is futility. Where are you from? I want you to think about it. Purpose. Purpose. And sometimes 
at the forefront of ministry when things, it's like, oh, God, when I stop, I said, that is for small boys. If you walk with God for a long time, you know that he will eventually come through. You need to walk in faithfulness. And when the oil of faithfulness is released, you don't do much. You don't do much. But we get caught up with jealousy, envy, competition, and X, Y, Z, and uh, you, 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 you destroy everything and, and you lose focus you're busy chasing after that which somebody else already gotten when your source dictates that god created you in his image and everything that he has for you he cannot deny you it's only a matter of time that whatever he has for you will just walk in am i speaking to somebody hello 40 days and 40 nights goliath stood up said all that he would say give me a man god sent him a small boy it was god's purpose for him the small boy came and whipped him. I see somebody's victory walking in. And the way your victory will walk in will not be by the normal standards. I prophesy in the name of Jesus. Your victory will come in not by the normal human standards. It will come in the way God has determined it. And nobody can stop it. I said nobody can stop it. I said nobody can stop it. I said nobody can stop it. Because in his time, he makes all things. Ask somebody sitting beside, can you wait for his time? Hallelujah. So where am I from? I have a source. And my source, it is the, res- how many know it's the responsibility of God to take care of you? We never think it through that way. I don't think you'd give birth to your child and say, go child and take care of yourself. We are forever children before God. It is his responsibility. Now, he said, when you go through the valley of the shadow of death, I am. Why is he there? He created you. My rod and staff day. He said, you shall not be afraid of the arrow that fly by day. Or the pestilence that walk in the noonday. Or the destruction that wasted that day. Why? It is his responsibility. To take care of you. You are too busy trying to be God. Unto yourself. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are too busy trying to be. No. I'm going to do it my way. And you've done it your way for all these years. Nothing is happening. It means that you're trying to take the job of God. Let God be God. Let him be God. It is his responsibility to give you what you eat, what you wear, the job, the husband, the health that you're expecting from him. It is his responsibility. And in his time, he fulfills everything he said to you. Woe unto you if you jump ahead of God. Because he loves you. Many of you have lost great things because he had to push you back. Back into line. You were running too quick and he knew that it was going to be a crash. You are going to crash and die. And men will mock his name. Ah, you're a Christian. You jumped ahead. And so guess what he did? He pushed you back into line. And when he pushed you back, you thought you had lost everything. No, you are about to possess everything. It was the beginning of your time to be a possessor. Let him be God. Tell somebody, let him be God. Am I speaking to somebody? Number two, question you, you need to ask, who am I? Who am I? Who am I? It will amaze you that you can be 50 years and still not know who you are. It will amaze you that you can be 12 years and still and know who you are. We've been looking for you, son. Did you not know that I'll be about my father's business? Jesus knew who he was. At 17, David appears at the battlefront, never gone to war, never a soldier. He was the last one of the family. Only being an errand boy, go and give food to your brothers. Went to the war front. Watch this. Went to the war front, saw Goliath, and his blasphemy, he said, I will fight this fight. At 17, he knew who he was. Forty. God wanted to reveal Moses' identity to him. He said, no, wait. Jumped ahead. 
God had to push him back. It took him 40 years. 80. Moses got to understand who he was when he was 80. One person got to understand who he was when he was 12. Another 17. Each were used by God. One has the advantage of youth. The ability to do more. David had the advantage. Jesus had the advantage. Moses was 80. 80. 80. Who am I? People, your identity is not in the house you live in, nor the car that you drive, nor the dress, clothes, designer, designer, chanaiza, all these things. We surround ourselves with them. We assume at some point it is easy to think your identity is in the suit you wear or the car you drive. When the music fades and all is stripped away and I simply come. Now, 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 Matt Redmond was one day sitting down and he said that what if we begin to worship God without instruments and this song was born. All is stripped away. Who are you? Who are you? When they take away the facade, what you project. Do you have insecurities? Then you're a human being created in the image of God. Have you had failures? Then you're a human being created in the image of God. Do you wish things would work the other way? Then you're a human. You are now proper, human proper. Human proper. Human. Am I speaking? Wait a minute, let me know you are being blessed. Hallelujah. Am I talking to somebody? Who are you? Your car does not define you. Because one day it can burst into flames. The design today, the next day they design another. There's something about you in your core that defines you. Who am I? Who are you? Take away all the surnames and facial description and nose types and teeth types and, and heights and, and sizes and or shoe sizes and everything. When all is stripped away, I've been a pastor and a prophet for far too long to know when people are faking. And my heart beats and it bleeds for the, such uh, uh, people. And I feel sorry for such individuals because you see, for how long can you pretend when all will be stripped away? When all will be stripped away. How many know that Jesus was naked when he was hanging on the cross? All was stripped away. Yet he found himself in his father. So he said, into your hands I commit my heart. All was stripped away. And he looked at that man who said, remember me in paradise. He said, today, he had power to forgive on the cross. When all is stripped away, who are you? When all is stripped away, there's one thing I know. Everyone has been created by God. But not everyone is a child of God. Because everyone claims to believe in God. And so God changed the script. John chapter 1, 12. But as many as believed in his name, he gave them power. Put it on the board. Put it, put it on the screen. Be quick, Josh. He gave them power to become the sons. Now, there was a transmutation or transmogrification. Whatever this, there was a trans. <laughs> Someone look there. Look, have you ever sat down and thought about this? That... As many as believed in him, now the subject was changed. No longer could you claim to be a child of God without going through Jesus. He said, Jesus, he said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. If Jesus is the way, then you can't lose your way. If Jesus is the truth, you cannot be lied to. If Jesus is the life, then you have eternal life. Definition of who you are is found first in Christ. He gave them the power. So it, even to claim to be a child of God, you have to be given that power. Receive that power in the name of Jesus. Listen, sometimes the things we go through strips us off who we are in Christ. And, and, and beg, often puts you to, uh, the, the, to, to the beggarly realm where you begin to question, am I still a child of God? Yes, you have that power. You have that power. Give them the power. 
to become the sons. He said, these people, not by the will of man, is there. Even to them, go on verse 13. Even to them that believed in him. Which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh. So you are not born because your father and mother met. Nor the will of man, but of, oh, shall back, but of, but of, am I helping somebody? We know, we put every, how much we earn and don't earn and what we have and we don't have and where we live and where we don't live. The Bible said the rich and the poor, God is the maker of them all. The reason why one is rich and one is poor is because of the choices they've made. But all were created by God. Who am I? So you define yourself by the marriage. By your marriage. Anything can happen. You define yourself by your educational accolades. You can be very educated and stop poor and never impact society. You define yourself by how much you earn. You can earn it today and tomorrow and nothing. Life changes. Hello? Life is like a wave. It's only by grace. You can be very healthy. I have met people who were healthy today. The next time they said they were dead. Dead for dead. They were okay. Nothing was wrong with them. But you see, if I were you, define yourself in the fact that you've been saved by the blood of Christ. And that you're a child of God. That nobody can take from you. Money people can take from you. Houses people can take from you. Clothes people can take from you. Positions people can take from you. Everything man gives to you, man can take it from you. But that which came from God can only be taken by God. Am I helping you? And that your true sense of identity is not in the pursuit of the things we are running after. We want, we want, we want. One day we leave everything. And we are left with God. That is strange. We need it. We want. I won't listen. I won't forgive. You don't know me. Speaking in tongues while sinning. Then we leave it. We leave it. We leave everything. And we are stripped. There. And when you are stripped. There. Who are you? The answer is that. I'm a child. Of God. Am I speaking to somebody? I'm a child of God. This question, it refers to your identity, which reveals your uniqueness and character. You have the breath of God. I have the breath of God. But your environment and your upbringing forms your character and your uniqueness. And the beautiful thing about life is that you can change the effect of your environment by putting in the effort. You don't have to remain the same in your thought processes. They are talking, people who don't believe in God are talking about defeat and hardship. You're also a believer, a child of God. It's true. It's true. Life is hard. It is hard. Forgetting your confessions will exactly be who you become. You are your confessions. Hallelujah. They don't believe in God. Oh, we are sick. You, you are sick, man. We are not all sick. <laughs> and they, oh, this, uh, 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 well, I was talking about Zika virus is all over. It cannot be all over. It is wherever you permit it. Am I speaking to somebody? A child of God. Born by the blood anew. The born again experience. Amen. And I pray that God will empower somebody to understand their purpose in Jesus' mighty name. We can continue next week. Kindly stand.